Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm here in a parking lot. I hope that you can hear me. I don't have this window down all the way because there's more traffic on that side, but this window is down. I want to ask you for help with cotton. You know, I've mentioned I'm making the um, crossbody water bottle holder. Well, the reason why I haven't showed you the one that I made over the weekend is because I ran out of the cotton. I'm halfway done the strap and I ran out. The problem is it's a cotton that I bought at Hobby Lobby during one of their clearances. And so they don't have it anymore. And I'm wondering if any of you have one um, skein of it and I'll buy it from you. And it's the Crafter's Secret. And the color is color name 164 slash hot pink stone washed. And the dye lot number is 238219. But the color is hot pink stone washed and it's really nice. And um, like I said, I'm halfway done the strap and I ran out. If I can't find that anyone has one that I can buy from them, what I could do is um, I could rip out the strap and use another color. Like, I'll have to look through my cotton and see if I have a, a pink that I could use for the strap. But it can't be a light pink. It would have to be a pink that would kind of go with the stone washed. I wouldn't want to use white. But I'm hoping that somebody out here in YouTube land has one, just one. I'll buy it from you and at their regular two twenty nine. This one I bought, you know, fifty cents, but I'll pay you the um the two twenty nine and I'll pay the shipping. I just really wanna not rip out the work that I've done. I wanna finish it so that I can show it to you. And um I plan to be making some more different patterns and asking a couple ladies at church if they can take them to their job and sell them or get orders for other colors. But now I will know that one of these is not enough. But I have um, other kinds of cottons like sugar and cream and that lily. I have some, I love this cotton, which I do not like. And I would never use it for anything like this. For me, I find that the I Love This Cotton does not keep its shape. I've made pot holders out of it, and uh, it didn't keep its shape. The I Love The Cotton that I have, I will use it, but I'll use it um, just for dishcloths, for just me. And I don't like the um, cotton at the Dollar Tree. I've used it, and I don't like it. I do like this one, Crafter's Secret, and I love... I mean, I like um, sugar and cream and that Lily's one. And Premier. Premier cotton from Michael's is good for, I have found, for dishcloths. But um, not for something like this. The Saturday when I started one of these, I started with the Premier. And I got a funny feeling about it. Once the water bottle is in it, it's probably really going to stretch out really quick it's just i don't find it durable for something like that and that's just my opinion but anyway if any of you have the crafter secret cotton in the color hot pink stone washed could i please buy it from you just one i would love to and i have this book here so i'm gonna share something this says when you should never eat soup never eat soup from a grocery store or restaurant without checking the sodium content especially if you have high blood pressure many are full of hidden salts and sugars in fact just one can of tomato soup made with milk has almost as much salt has five slices of bacon and more sugar than a blueberry muffin so make your own healthy alternative instead. Start by pureeing a half pound of fresh peeled tomatoes. 
Not only do they taste fabulous, but they contain only about 10 milligrams of natural sodium. Heat them with either water or low-fat milk and add delicious spices like thyme, curry powder, garlic, and fresh basil. So that's a little helpful hint. You know, I hardly ever, ever buy canned soup from the store. Even if the can says reduced sodium, I hardly ever do. And I remember last year in the cold months, I think I only bought two, um, well, they're like boxes, you know, of low sodium chicken broth and one vegetable broth. Now, like the year before and the year before that, I would really stock up on those. But last year during the cold months, I only bought two. Um, just because I was feeling it would be better for me just to buy chicken and boil it up and use that broth and um, bo boil it down to the bone and get all that stuff that you can get, all those good flavors and whatever. Um, I I really prefer to make my own soup, and I always have. And the possibilities are limited, limit, unlimited when you're making your own soup. And like my mother said, um, soup can go a long way because you can always add more water to it to stretch it, <laughs> which is true. You know, you can make soup last for a few days, especially me, one person cooking for one, you can imagine. And um, when I make a homemade soup, I make a big pot of it and I put it in containers and, and I freeze a lot of it or um, in good strong Ziploc bags I've frozen some soup in before. I do like soup, all kinds of soup I make. I hardly, I don't remember the last time I bought like a Progresso, low sodium, any kind of salt. It's been a few years. I think even way before lockdown, I, I didn't buy any of that. And uh, in my house or my trailer, oh, I feel like I got something on my lip. Uh, I don't have any salt in there. I don't have any sugar. Um, Sometimes I'll use a seasoning called sasson, and that has a little bit of salt in it, but it has other things. And um, I make my own homemade sofrito. Some of you may know what that is. You can buy it in the store, but you really get more if you make it homemade, and it's so simple. Maybe one day I can do a video showing you, but I'm sure there's lots of videos out there on how to make it. But it's great to add to soups and um if you're baking chicken you can marinate your chicken in it i sound like i'm a great cook i'm not and i don't like to cook <clears throat> i never have liked to cook but i have to cook and i sure don't like to bake i do not like to measure so baking is out if i have the choice which i do i prefer to cook over baking Oh, let me tell you something. What happened yesterday? Boy, oh boy. I went to bring some fresh eggs, four nice fresh eggs, to a friend of mine that um, has a business. And I went over there to drop off those eggs. Well... I was leaving and outside of the business was um, a pile of towels and my friend uh, was laid up so um, I just left the eggs there and told them where I had left them and anyway um, I thought well you know what I'm just gonna I know that they shake out those towels and they they bag them up and I thought well I'm walking by that pile of towels I think that I'm gonna do that just to help you know and um, something popped up are you ready for this 
Mm. I was shaking the towels. All of a sudden, I shook and these things fell out. Five. Mm. My heart, my heart just started racing. You know, um, what they were were five newborn bunnies. I mean, these little, little cute little things didn't even have their little eyes open. And I didn't panic. I'm, I'm thankful that I'm one that I don't panic in a situation, but my heart did a little racing because, well, I didn't expect that. And then I felt so bad that they fell out of the towel under the hot concrete. So, um, somebody else was at that business working and I yelled over to them, there's babies over here. Can you go and get something, a, a box or something? And they did and I had no choice, you know, but to pick them up. I don't know. Later, someone told me not supposed to touch them because of your scent, but I had no choice. I just picked them up quickly. I put them in the box. I um, let my friend that owns the business know about it, and no one, none of us knew what to do. There was no mother rabbit around that we could see. Oh, and I... Um, well, what I was preparing to do was to leave them there just so I could run to a pet store and get some special milk and a syringe. Like, I don't have enough animals uh, to care for. And I and while I'm preparing to, to go do that, I have one of the people that work there looking up online, you know, how to care for baby bunnies, really, like newborn. and. He's reading it to me, you gotta feed every three hours, and I'm thinking five baby bunnies every three hours, I'm gonna, you know, be dealing with them, and I would do it. Then I said, but what am I gonna do, you know, when they get to the point where someone needs to take them? I can't not have um, five bunnies. I mean, my landlord wouldn't care if I had a hundred, but I, I just can't keep up with all of that and um, no one there could take them nobody knew what to do they were telling me to to go ahead and do what I was gonna do and then today call around these shelters and see if anyone would take them well you know our local shelter and the one down the road in Saxe they um, in the past they've not been very helpful let's just say that I don't want to tear them down because I'm not that type of person and I haven't had a bad experience with either one of those shelters as far as any animal being abused that I know of. I mean people write all kinds of reviews on things without knowing the whole story. Sometimes they just jump on someone's bandwagon and my Sadie came from the Saxe Animal Shelter so thank God that somehow they got Sadie has a puppy and then I ended up with her anyway um, oh I, I was just saying <clears throat> oh God help me to know what to do and um, while I was standing there and this other guy was reading all the information to me about about what I just told you um, we looked out and there was um, an adult rabbit probably the mother, looking over at our direction. And where she was, she was under something. Um, and so I thought, I'm, I'm going to take the babies over there. The kid that got the box for me had gotten a nice um, soft flannel sheet some, from somewhere, I don't know where, and he had put it in the box. And those babies, they were sleeping. One had his little foot over his nose like that and two of them were curled up I mean I oh I got pictures I'm gonna post them on my community page um so I thought about it and thought about it and um that's what I did I took the babies over to where we saw the mama or where we saw that adult rabbit under something and I just 
lifted up the flannel blanket or flannel sheet and put that whole thing under where that rabbit was. And, um, oh man, you know, it stayed on my mind because we have coyotes, we have bobcats, and, um, the thing is, they could not be left where she had left them for many reasons that I can't get into, but um, we still can't figure out how she got through a double chain link fence to put her babies where they were. I mean, that, that in itself is a mystery, but um, they couldn't be left there. And I just say, thank God, thank God that God saw fit for me to find them because, um, you know, they may have been dead by now. Someone, another friend told me, well, sometimes the mothers hide their babies in the day someplace and then go back at night. She might have went back, you know, at night to see if they were in that towel. But the thing is, it wasn't just one towel. It was a whole bunch of towels put out and more was going to be added to it with, um, with chemicals on them. You know, and so it just wasn't, it wasn't right for me to try to find a way to put him back under those towels. I, I really feel like I did the right thing. And, um, but huh, who, who would have expected that? Not me, but they were so cute. There's no way though I could, um, take on five baby rabbits. A couple weeks ago, there was um, a rabbit at the Saxe Animal Shelter, and it was up for free adoption. My pastor's wife, she loves animals, and, and her family has a big dog, and that's enough for them. And um, But because she has such a great love for animals, she's always looking at that Saxe Animal Shelter. And she sent me the... Um, the post about that rabbit you know it was free to a good home and um i said oh no i can't i just cannot take on any more when i was a kid i had two rabbits and then i got into collecting rabbits like um ceramic rabbits and oh there was a time i had so many rabbits uh collectible ones you know as a kid uh, people in my family would go to garage sales and if I remember one time someone in my family bought me a real cute salt and pepper shaker and they were both bunnies and I had a bunny coffee mug um, all kinds of bunny things and through the years as I got older and I moved my bunnies, as much as I'd wrap them up and pack them up, when I'd get to wherever I was going and unpack finally, a bunny would be losing an ear, a bunny would be losing the head. <laughs> and um, I, I got out of collecting them. I think somewhere packed away, I may have one or two that are very sentimental. Like I've said before, I've been in Texas since 2011 and I've still not unpacked everything because I'm one that just, I hate unpacking. But I feel for sure somewhere packed away is at least one or two sentimental um, ceramic bunnies. But I did used to collect them. And I did have two real ones when I was a kid. And they were fun. I didn't have them both at the same time. But I do remember them and I remember holding them and petting them. And the one that I had used to like to lay on his side and have me rub his belly. Yep. And so I'm here at the Sprouts and Michaels and all that parking lot because um, I'm having a hard time to find grapes. Yesterday I went to Kroger, couldn't find grapes. Went to Aldi's, couldn't find grapes. I even took myself to the Walmart that's up the road. 
they had grapes, but they did not look good. And also that Walmart is has switched over to self-checkout only. You know what? I did a short 15 second video in that Walmart just showing the middle of the store is completely empty. And I just panned around and did 15 second short video and it has over 2,000 views. You never know what people like to see. And anyway, um, what did I buy there? Oh, I bought a gallon of unsweet tea. That's something that has been hard to find. All last week I went to, uh, well, I shouldn't say all last week because I didn't go to Kroger every day, but I did go to Kroger last week twice and um, I looked for a gallon of unsweet tea, nothing. In fact, one time they had no tea sweet or unsweet and um so yesterday at walmart i did buy a gallon of unsweet tea and i bought a a package like this of baby spinach it was reduced for clearance and i got those for the chickens and the gosling the gosling loves that and um i didn't know that the store was self-checkout oh and i got two things of royal blue cotton it says royal blue but it, it don't look royal blue to me but it's a blue and um it's it's the big ones like about this big and um but i forget the brand but i got it from walmart they were both on clearance for 50 cents and i tried to see if any of the other cotton was on clearance and it wasn't and i went down the next aisle and I noticed all of their buttons were almost all gone and all were marked down. The tags were still there, 25 cents, 50 cents, 75 cents. So I don't know what they're doing with their buttons. I just happened to notice that. I should have done a short on that maybe. And those were the only things I got was the gallon of unsweet tea, that package of baby spinach and two of that cotton on clearance for 50 cents each. And I was checking myself out and everything was going good until I got to the baby spinach and it would not ring up the um, the reduced price even with that handheld thing that you you use and uh, I pressed for help and a lady came who was not too happy and before I could tell her why I called for help she told me you know you're in self-checkout I said, I know that I'm in self-checkout and I'm doing pretty good until I got to this baby spinach and the thing won't ring up. And she said, you, you can't just slide it across when they're reduced. You have to use the handheld thing. I said, I've tried it twice and I even tried it once in front of her and it wouldn't go. And she says, we're not supposed to help you. This is self-checkout. She was so annoyed that I needed help. And, um... I said, well, t could you tell me what to do? And then she said, well, give it to me. And I gave it to her and she ended up doing it. She had to manually punch in the numbers. If she would have told me that's what I had to do, I would have done it. I did not I did not know. Anyway, um, I asked her after, I said, are you, are you having a bad day? And um, she didn't answer me. <laughs> so I told her, well, I hope that your day gets better. And she walked away. She was... Um, really annoyed with me but you never know if someone is having a bad day so I just look at it that way and I mean at least I got it finally for the reduced price and those chickens are loving it I just put out a couple of handfuls yesterday and this morning I did and the goslin went right over and he just loves it or she oh I was talking to a landlord last night on the phone he was sitting out with his chickens it was getting time to put him up but he has a very secure chicken coop and chicken run it's all enclosed so he just uh, sits out there and makes sure that they go in and I could hear his gosling and um, he asked me if I figured out the sex of mine yet and I said no I said, uh, the lady at the feed store told me that when the gosling loses its down feathers, you'll be able to tell the sex by the tail. And when I went to ask her, well, how, 
you know, then other customers came, they were paying for things. And so the landlord said that he read online, if it's a female, then the tail will be more pointed. If it's a male, it will be more rounded. He, he says he believes his is a female and I'm gonna check mine out today. And Well, we decided that um, if we ever find an egg, then we'll for sure know what it is but um when i go home today i'm gonna check that out oh um last night last night i finished putting a border on a blanket that i had made last year and it wasn't finished because i didn't finish the border but it is let me see i think it's 15 I believe it's 15 granny squares. I think it's three across and five down. And um, I love it. I would like to keep it, but it's not big enough, you know, for, I don't want to give it to my dogs. But it, it's all shades of, uh, let's see, it has white, black, a turquoise, uh, a navy blue, or you could call that blue a royal blue. And then of course I had to throw in a variegated. And it was just made with leftover you know, yarns, and um, I'm going to put it up for sale, and I, um, I was thinking of names, I don't know why, sometimes I like to name my blankets, and I'm going to name this one Splish Splash, because it so reminds me of um, being in a pool, or maybe even at the ocean, with all those different shades of blues it has, and even the white, you know, when you're at the ocean, that water has all the different shades of blue, but it has white in it too. Uh, I'm really proud of how it came out. So I finished the border last night. I need to measure it and take a picture and put it on my hopelessly website that I've been neglecting. I gotta make up a new password to get in it to change things. I forgot the password. I don't know if I told you that last week when I was dealing with that awful brain fog, I locked myself. Oh, 27 minutes. Where does the time go? I'll have to finish this after because um, I don't even have my hat on good. I'm not a hat person, but I'm so fair skinned in um, since that brain surgery, I've lost so much hair and I get burnt on my scalp that the dermatologist told me I need to wear a hat when I'm out. So, but I'm really not a hat person. I'm thinking I'm going to make me a bucket hat and out of cotton. But anyway, I don't know when this is going to cut off. So I will finish telling you my brain fog <laughs> incident from last week. And I'll be looking on my community tab for pictures of the bunnies. And I'll put a picture of my of this blanket, this afghan, on my community page too. I'm sure none of you are interested in buying it because you um, all do such beautiful work. But I'll still show it off to you. All right, I'm going to go in sprouts and see if I can't find some good grapes. All right, thank you everyone. I appreciate you.